Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and I'm here, whoops, I'm here playing Mega Dimension Neptunia V2R. I know it's a bit of a weird choice, but hey, I played the other Hyper Dimension Neptunia games before, I don't know why they've gone and renamed a Mega Dimension recently, but, well they have, and I figured that, well, this, this might be a good time, and I even have some weird little VR bits, which I thought would be fun to experience. However, I've never actually put the headset on for this game, um, for some, well not for some reason, I can understand why, but they don't actually, like, make you put the headset on, they let you control the VR sections as if they were just like a regular game, so, that's perfectly fine by me. So we can go have a little bit of a look around before we hop into it. The sound settings are fucking strange. Now, I'm not going to claim to know why all the audio settings are all over the place here, but what I can tell you is that in some certain, certain circumstances, they don't work properly. There are some sounds that are just way louder than others for some reason, and the background music can be really annoyingly loud at the even quiet times. It's really bizarre, which is why I actually turned down the background music volume a bit when I first started the game, so... That's what we're gonna do. We, uh, and of course, since I applied the settings, I went to my main monitor because putting this on your second monitor is a massive pain in the neck. But, well, there you go. You have the opportunity to choose between the English and the Japanese dub, and I prefer the English dub for one reason. NEP sounds miles ahead, and considering that you're spending most of this game with NEP, or at least the regular version of NEP, because there's two versions of NEP in this game, and one of them is honestly really boring, like almost everybody else in this bloody game for some reason, the English selection is probably what you want to go for. There's just some kind of snide sarcasm that NEP has in the English dub, which just doesn't come across in the Japanese one, which is nice. You have a fair few options for game controls, which is actually pretty neat. They give you a lot of stuff to play around with, including some extra alerts, some the ability to reset your combo on your defense slot if you just want to spam the same combo over again. Hint, you do. And you even have the ability to change your skill commands for the buttons for them anyway. It's actually kind of neat. You also got some PC related settings here because this is on PC if the title of the video didn't tip you off. And there's not actually that much in the grand scheme of things, but considering that I'm running on an A700K and an RDX 2080, I'd be amazed if it couldn't run the game properly, and it does, so there's nothing really going on here. That's too much to worry about, so let's just hit continue and go straight into it. Now, it says that my playtime there is 21 minutes. That's a lie. I've been playing the game for four hours, and I can't even show you my Steam time for that because it's wrong as well, because I played some of the game in offline mode for reasons I won't go into. But yeah, I've been playing the game for about four hours at this point. The clock just starts clocking, um, the clock starts ticking up and down at random. It's really bizarre. It can't seem to keep a good uh, management on when it keeps time or not. For some reason it was working fine now, but almost every other time I've booted the game up, it doesn't bother clocking it up at all. So, you have some VR stuff to do here, but we're not actually going to do that. We're just going to hop straight into the gameplay, which is where the majority of the game is. It's a, it's a little bizarre. They're just kind of disconnected in this weird way. There is some, like, story relevance to the VR bit, like, early on, but turns out the fake Neptune who visits you every time... Um, who visits you every now and again at the end of each chapter just has popped into the game at this point. And there's not really that much else to... to talk about. So I'm assuming she's not actually going to show up at the end of every chapter anymore, but we're just going to go through a chapter anyway. So I'll we're just going to enter the city here, and there are a few things you can do. You can build routes, but I haven't actually been able to build anything yet. They're basically just build new paths, whether they be the new dungeons or anything like that. You've also got a shop you can go to, and you're able to buy more stuff as you go along as the game progresses, but they haven't given me any new items in the past four hours, so I haven't really haven't had the opportunity to buy anything worth buying. And you can also converse, this is where you go to talk to people. Story relevant stuff is marked by that exclamation point. There is also stuff you can do in the menu. So we've got Neptune, Uzume, and Nepgear, which is perfectly fine. You've got all their different uh, different kinds of accessories they've got here. You've also got their processors, which can be equipped to them in CPU mode. We'll get to all that stuff shortly. Tools, which are basically just consumable items. 
You got plans which you can use to develop certain items. So I can develop a steel bracelet, for example, and that'll give me hopefully a decent a decent bracelet. Yeah. 142 physical, 138 magic defense. That's pretty good. It's actually better than everything I've got, so I might want to give that to some people. I can also forge some weapon strengthening material and armor and just processor and all that, but I don't appear to have the resource for any of that. I can also refine some metal. But I do not believe that I could actually do anything with this right now, so I won't bother wasting your time with it. Those are plans that usually they give you a lot of interesting plans to start with. At least they give you something along the lines of like make enemies in this dungeon harder or easier, but they haven't done that this time. Materials, idea chips, and collection, which is just key items. So in this game, you can build discs by combining a certain disc with a certain set of chips. However, I don't actually have any chips to do that with right now because the game has been really slow on unlocking stuff. Because I, I'm gonna have to go through this now, aren't I? So I say I've been playing for four hours, which is true, but I've been skipping a lot. I have been going through battles at maximum speed and I have been skipping a lot of cutscenes that would usually take me anywhere between five to 10 minutes to realistically go through and probably longer if you if you were to like say just slow down and let all the voice acting play out and you know just listen to it watch it like a cutscene and have a good time but unfortunately all the cutscenes have been so damn boring and the battles haven't been that much better that i've been skipping through a majority of it so if i'd gone through it the way i usually did i think i'd be around the five or six hour mark and still it feels like absolutely nothing is happening and it's been boring me to tears but yes i i haven't been able to develop discs much more than just putting a yellow chip in a yellow slot and creating the disc because I just haven't had the resources to do it with which is annoying. I've also got plenty of accessories and just stuff like that. It's it's really simple stuff so if we go to our equipment we can change a weapon, we can change her bracelet, actually we'll probably we'll change her bracelet to give her a little bit more defense. And you can give her a disc, so that'll give her a little bit extra uh, resist. And you can also change their processors for when they go into HDD mode, which is basically their power up mode. And when you change the processor, you can change the stat benefits they get once they go into HDD mode. I've got three people capable of going in HDD right now, but actually, is Neptune capable of HDD? I'm pretty sure I, qu I gave up trying to play this game after that just because I was. Board. And you can see your play data here. Not that much to see. Apparently there's a Colosseum at some point. But honestly, I could not care less. Challenges. I believe they give you something if you finish them, but I'll be damned if I know. Enemy info, location info, character info, Netpedia, all the basic stuff. And you can come back to the playroom at any time. Thankfully, one thing this game does have is autosave which is good. It just saves automatically all the damn time, so you don't have to worry too much. And also of note is that it actually has no way to quit the game. <laughs> like, I have no idea how you're supposed to actually quit outside of pressing Alt F4 if you're in full screen mode. I'm not going to claim to know what the deal is with I that, so whatever. So, properly. we're just going to go converse. I'll let you listen to some of the voice acting. Oh, bugger me. That was the skip button. Uh, oh look, fan service. Wait, what's the auto button again? Oh, it's it's RB. Right. Forgive my boundless stupidity, but I actually ended up showing a cutscene here that had no voice acting because I didn't have my sound on. I guess that's what I get for having that. So I'm going to put in a cutscene from later on in the game that actually does have voice acting. So, yeah. I've been waiting, children. Uh, R4! Why are you here? We are talking about you after all. I knew you'd be drawn here by the Share Crystal's power. I get it. Crystal clear. You set us up, didn't you? Correct. You're all too predictable. I figured using a silly crystal would draw you all out like moths to the flame. Well, I'm the one who found the thing you know. Wait, that voice. Crosty? Well, if it ain't my old pal, Neptune. It's been a while. You having fun out here? Of course not. 
I went through a ton of crap because of you. You left me behind and I got really lonely. No fun at all. Whoops, my bad. I couldn't help it though. I got kind of excited. This type of world is so interesting and rare. Nepsy, is this really Krosty? The one you were talking about earlier? That's right. The name's Krar. She's called that because she's crotchety. Yeah, keep flapping your gums, pal. It's related to Chronicle and you know it. Quit playing. Chronicle? As in a historical account? Nice work, fish brains. Yes, I record history. Whenever I travel to another dimension, I record all the history of that place. Wait, that sounds like a pretty important job. Why is someone like that tagging along with this haggard purple bug? Well, of course. If I'm with someone like her, the history I'm recording is gonna get real good. She's one step away from destroying this dump of a world, you know? You know how frickin' rare it is to see a world come to an end? So, you aren't our ally then. Man, I ain't anyone's ally. And if I gotta pledge allegiance somewhere, it's gonna be with whoever makes history more... exciting. That's the story. What a shame for you boring dimwits. What do you say, Neptune? Ditch those morons and come with us. See how this plays out. We can watch the world end together. Hmm... I'll pass. I'm not a big fan of Arbor, and... Come on, destroying an entire world? That's pretty macabre even for you. Ugh, their boredom has infected you, hasn't it? This kind of history isn't something you see every day, even if you want it to. Enough! Krar! I'll have no more idle gossip. I'm going to get rid of them now. Yeah, yeah, sheesh. What a short fuse. Don't you lose this one now. Me? Lose? Ha! <laughs> Just sit there and witness the demise of these poor CPUs. This is my true form. Yipes! She's transformed! Don't think I'm the same as before, foolish CPU. Kneel before the brilliance of my true form! She's got even worse taste than I thought. This form! Gearzy, you know this form? She looks exactly like the final form of the Deity of Sin. We fought before in my world. The four-legged monster we fought earlier also looked like the Deity of Sin's first form. On top of that, with Krar on her side, the chances of us winning... ...are quite slim, correct? Unfortunately, yes. Just when I finally found a way home, too. No, we're not backing down yet, Gearzy. Honestly, I've got no clue about what kind of people Krar and this deity of sin are. But if Krar's only into this because she wants to see the world get completely wrecked, all we gotta do is make sure that doesn't happen. Uzume... Don't even trip. I'm gonna beat down that purple wuss with style. If the enemy isn't too big to handle, then I can finally face it one on one! Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna skip the rest of the bloody voice acting I got going on here because... Well, let me go over how I feel about the cutscenes in this game. The main reason I was drawn to... The main reason that I, I was drawn oh, to Hyperdimension Neptunia was not the fan service. Nice benefit, nice bonus, but at the same time, it was it was a nice it was a nice little benefit. But the main reason that I liked it so much was because it it was a world of basically just referencing games non-stop. That was what got me engaged with the first set of Neptunia games. And also the humor. They were actually quite funny. The writers were a bit... Huh. Now apparently I get to pick this time. But they, they were actually pretty good at making funny jokes out of everything. This game has next to no references to games whatsoever outside of the usual set. Like, you know, obviously... Neptune and Nepgear are based on the Dreamcast. Uh, no, well, they're based, yeah, they're, they're, the, they're the Dreamcast people. And everybody else is based off everything else. If you don't know what Neptunia is, you probably should go watch some of my other videos on them. But in this game, the references seem to have gone out the window. 
They don't seem to be making very many references to anything at all. Oh look, you can finally tell me about root building, but... Can I actually build something now? Oh yeah, shortcut. Cool. 300 credits. I have 12,000. Because, yeah, it's kind of silly. D didn't need to worry about that one for a second, but okay. So, yeah, as I was saying, the... There's next to no references to games in here whatsoever, except for, like, a couple of weird names here and there. And there's one, like, weird VR event where the Dark Nep brings up Takeshi's Takeshi's... I can't talk today. Takeshi's Challenge on the NES. But other than that, they seem to be mainly putting that away for the fan service and the story. The fan service stuff has come up a fair amount more than I would have expected. Mainly because, you know, the VR stuff. And the story itself, which is honestly not that interesting because they take forever to get anywhere. They seem to have a lot of fun dragging their feet and getting anything done, especially with a lot of inane conversations that don't really go anywhere. Which is why I've been skipping a bunch of stuff, because there is honestly next to no relevant stuff here. And I, I've literally been able to follow the story by just picking up little bits of the skip text. Like, look at this. They're making me go through two more cutscenes before I get to the next dungeon, and each of them is like five minutes long each. It seems... It, it seems like endless padding. And I gotta admit, not that big of a fan of it. None of the cutscenes uh, over the past couple of hours have been particularly engaging or interesting to me. So, yeah. Not great. So... Now that we're actually in a dungeon, we can have a bit of a wander. And there are, of course, enemies running around. Breakable objects to find, items to pick up, and not that much else because it's a Neptunia game. They don't get much more complicated than that. And of course, if we attack someone, we can pop straight into a fight. So, if you've played the Hyperdimension Neptunia games before, you'll know how this stuff works. They say that they refreshed this from Hyperdimension Neptunia V2, but... I'm going to be perfectly honest, I do not rem- I, Like, this looks so familiar in comparison to the bloody, um... This looks so familiar in comparison to the ones I played on Vita that they don't feel that much different at all. There are a couple of different things they got going for them which aren't particularly, you know, which are new, like not old. But, I'm just saying that it's a bit- it's very familiar. So. Here's how it works. You can make a combo. You press the A button to make a combo, and you can build a combo out of your attacks that you've got. Different weapons and different characters will have different combos. And you throw out your combo like that, and you do damage. You've got PP, you've got action points you can use per turn. You've also got PP, which lets you use items. I can't actually use them right now because I don't have any AP. And once you're out of AP, you've got to do a defense skill to end the turn. And that moves on to the next person. And basically, you just do the same thing. You can save AP by just defending at the end of a turn and will carry on to the next turn. But in the majority of battles that I've played, and by the majority, I mean all of them, I haven't needed to do this at all. Like, seriously. I've been playing most of the battles in this game by doing the following, and I'll demonstrate using this guy here. Hit the guy, hold the LT button literally all the time. Do a combo. It skips. Oh, Go into defense right. mode. Go you to the next character. Do the combo. Maybe I should Go into defense mode. This all. Do the combo. Go into defense mode. Keep holding the I'm LT ready. button so it skips the animations. Keep holding the LT button. Yay, all skipped. Not. Hold the LT button to skip the end of the thing there. That's how I've been playing this game's combat because... You can literally finish battles in seconds. And I admit, I actually approve of this quite heavily because the battles in these games can get boring as hell. Especially since they've given you next to no stuff to really work with yet. Now, this isn't the worst thing in the world. And to be fair, there are mechanics coming. I am fully aware that there are mechanics coming. I, I will... Right, I need to keep my finger off the LT button and let you watch the animations for a bit. And there are things I haven't quite gone over yet, like the ability to go into HDD mode, and when you go into that mode, you gain the ability to do a special kind of attack. You do also have special attacks and formation attacks, and the way that this game works is, 
It's not like most other RPGs where you end up in a position where you you leave a battle and then you end up having to do something along the lines of like use healing items to get all your stuff back up. No, in this game your HP goes back to full every time you leave the game um, every time you leave the fight. And you also get the ability and you also get the ability to um Wait with me. You also have the ability to throw out special attacks pretty much as much as you want because your SP it doesn't actually like regenerate. Your SP re actually regenerates during turns. I'm an idiot. I need to think about what I say. See, I actually think about what I say before I say it, and I still say something right? stupid. That Into is me in a nutshell. Book. But yeah, you can use special moves as much as you like in this game because you, you SP isn't something that's yeah. like generated. It, it isn't something that's persistent across battles, along with HP. So you can use special moves as much hey, as you like, and you can also go into HDD mode as much as you like because, well, as I said, Next. it's just not a thing. So that you need to worry about in this game, your SP usage or anything like that, because you, all your stuff recharges. You the thing is, all down. the battles in this game have been so ridiculously easy, I haven't needed to. I haven't needed to go into HDD mode, because there's just been next to no point. All the battles have been easy enough that I can get by just fine without it. I'll show you the power of a CPU! Yes, I... Oh. And I just released HDD, so I'm gonna go back on that and just hold the there. Yeah, yeah, that was that was dumb of me. All right, let's just put her in defense. And, oh, this one can't actually go HDD. That's that's fine. Makes sense plot wise. But yes, there's really I'll just this all. it's just be, the combat is so easy that you don't need to pull out half your special tricks. Even the bosses that they, they come up with, you don't have to worry about pulling out all your special tricks with because. They just go down really quickly. I won't hold back. They are. I'm, I'm trying to find a spot where I can actually hit two at once here, but I don't think that's going to be a thing. So I'm just going to go through the effort of taking yeah, this I one out one. so that we don't have all you these dudes running around fight. attacking us at full strength all the time. You know, of course, you have to do this annoying thing where you have to try and reposition yourself to see if you can actually hit but more bye. than one dude at once. Of course, that's not actually going to be a thing here, but. Yeah. I no longer have and considering there's like other than like losing your Yay, I got one! My turn. Other than losing the XP on characters that go down, you know, so that eyes are spit the bye. You, you don't want to keep them alive just for that, that so that they don't lose all the XP flying. they're gonna get. But other than that, there's next to no reason to worry about You're keeping surrounded. them alive. You can carry along like 30 different healing items. And if you just use one, like on a turn where you've got low health, you'll be absolutely fine. The battle difficulty in this game is basically non-existent. Like, I've had next to no trouble whatsoever, and it's actually kind of disappointing, if I'm being perfectly honest, because it means that most of the battles literally just evolve into go up, use your basic attacks, rinse and repeat until they're dead. And that also actually helps with the grinding as well, because you don't have... You know, like, you've got a lot of battles just in the way, and if you just go through and just keep doing your basic attacks, you don't have that much to worry about when you hit the bosses, too. I have run into a few bosses throughout the game, and each of them have more or less been the same thing. Like, uh, sometimes you'll uh, transform into HDD mode for the bonus damage, and sometimes you'll need to use a healing item, but... I mean, even these big guys here, you'd think these guys would be way more of a threat, but no, done in two. Most of the time, they're done in one, so... Yeah, they've made the battles ridiculously easy. Naughty kids will go in my specimen book. I'm sorry. And it's disappointing. Again, that's probably the Colosseum later on. They'll probably give you like more interesting fights and just, you know, general stuff like that, but I haven't got there yet. I've been playing for four hours, but if we don't count the fact that I've been skipping cutscenes and junk, it's probably closer to five or six. And I'm just bored out of my skull. Because the battles are just choose. not interesting at all. They are legitimately kind of... Well, they're Sorry not bad, and, and there's probably going to be more... Like, th I there is another it. thing that I haven't gone into yet, because I haven't gotten the opportunity, and I'm honestly not 100% sure how they're supposed to work. I'm but there are these formation feeling. combo attacks right, that you can do. By having everyone in a specific spot, 
then by putting everyone on defense so they can save up the AP and the uh, special um, counters they need. And everyone's also got pet partner attacks, but due to... Um, Everyone's also got partner attacks, but I think you need to get your relationship levels up for that, which is, of course, a thing in this game as well, because it's a nap game. It'd be weird if there was a nap game without partner uh, relationships, because it's been in literally every game since the first one, but still, as I was saying, the general thing is that I just haven't gotten the partner levels up enough yet, and they've been swapping the par party on me constantly. I've had regular Neptune around here for a while now, but for whatever reason, they just decided to swap her out by sending her back to her own dimension, and it, it just I'm, I'm down I'm back to another Neptune, and this Neptune is more boring. I'm not entirely sure what's up with this Neptune here. She she showed up pretty regularly, right? Like she it's not like her showing up in the main plot is something that is. Um, Unexpected. So she actually did what show did up in the VR events. And she'll sit down, she'll talk to you, and she'll do like stuff like that, you know. But she won't actually like say anything of like real note or just reasonable uh I don't I don't mean reasonable, but I mean she just doesn't say anything interesting. Like she's less interesting than the regular old Neptune because she doesn't have that funny snark going for her in the same way that the regular Neptune does. And she's the one who you spend the majority of the VR events with. And it's just bizarre. I don't know what the deal is. Is there a special Finally. attack that can help me out with this? Not really. Alright. I'll we'll just take, we'll just take him out. Right. And then we'll hit these two at the same time. And we'll just hold the skip button because there's no point in doing anything else. I know you can run around battles, but at the same time, considering that if I were to run around too many battles, I'd probably be too weak for the boss fights. I don't want to do that as much as you might think. You're so naive. Next. Well, we lost the zoom, eh? So that kind of sucks. But let's nip things up. Whatever. Honestly, I do not care at Leave this point. I'm sorry. We'll just run along. There's no reason to actually go and fight anyone anymore. What's this? I admit that I don't recognize a lot of the enemies. Like, there are a few enemies. I'll give them a little bit of credit that, that I'm new. Or at least relatively new, because as I said, I haven't played Hyper Dimension... Neptunia V2, but there are a fair amount of new ones. There are also some recycled ones, but then again, it would feel weird if there was a Hyper, yeah. hyper Dimension Neptunia yeah. game that didn't have a enemy that was literally just a, a screenshot of Toki Meki Memorial. So, like, I'll let them pass on that one, and there are some enemies that are new, and they, of course, all have, have the usual status effects, like virus and stuff like that, but just... Outside of that, again, it's just, it's the same old battle system from what I remember from the Rebirth What's games, this? except there's just a couple of extra, like, new little combo things on top. It doesn't, it doesn't feel that different in the grand scheme of things. Yep, yeah. yeah, I can destroy those and get some extra items from it. Yeah. These two? Sure. And then, of course, you got some other problems with the dungeon. Like, for example, they don't actually show you where the, um... They don't actually show you where exactly you need to go if you're not in the same room as the goal for some reason. I don't know why they've done that, but it, sometimes it might make it hard to actually get through a area if you don't know where you're going, if they're a little bit more maze-like. I can see that being a problem in the future. I haven't run into it just yet, but still, it's a little bizarre. I'll be serious! At least this all seems to run okay. All the special stuff is... All, all the specials work okay. No real fancy massive effects that massively kill a computer. But then again, I'm on an A700K. I'd be amazed if anything... Waiting, children. Uh, four. I, I, I'd be amazed if... Um, you know, I'll just skip this. Again. Because there is a ridiculous amount of... 
show you a CPU. All right, so everybody starts out HDD mode here. So let's just go up and try and beat the crap out of us, shall we? No reason not to do anything else. Ruins As you can see, all. he has a lot of health bars, but yeah. it's not a massive deal. Uh, we will heal up Here. just to be safe. I'm trying to get into a position where I can show off a formation attack, but they can be surprisingly hard to get in the right positions for. So the way it works is that when your three characters are in a very specific physical place on the combat arena, you can do formation attacks. They are surprisingly uh, twitchy in how you do them, though. Uh, no, let's not defend. Let's just try and beat the crap out of us some more. I guess we have defend. to do this. Okay, can... uh, let's special. Why not? Light speed just sword dance. Give you a look. Formula edge. Yeah. Not bad. At least they look nice. Fun to watch. Finally. Nope, I, I just can't find the right place for it today. Usually I'm okay at finding them, but for whatever reason, it's just not working for me these days. Rush. Cool, I get to throw out two special attacks. Oh, special attack and regular attack in one turn. That's nice. Yeah, yeah I've already taken out half of the health bars. The top be swallowed by the darkness. And suffer. That stung a little. Stop. It's Uzume's turn. Uh, Uzume. Yeah, let's give her an item just to be safe. Here. You're totally. You stay Leave right to there. Nepki, are you? Oh, for God's sake. How hard is it to find a bloody formation attack? They're basically special attacks, but with three people. That's basically all they are. It's a little bizarre. Uh, yeah. Let me just continually slice the enemy again. And... Pop a healing pod. Oh, no. We'll just use a healing grass. I don't think it'll something else. It's not as much of a waste of a healing item. Ruin to all. Skip all the attacks there. And save a little bit of time. I'm guessing that I can't use formation attacks because I'm using the fake Neptune. That's 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 my guess. And that's annoying because it would have been nice to at least show one of them off. It's my turn. Uh, slash wave, why not? And I just skip that. Really should have Oh! Bye Nep gear, let's get it back up. I've got plenty of life fragments. Wanna try using this? And dream Here roll. I go. Sure. It's <laughs> and Leave it to me. Mirage dance. I'm sorry. And um, that's the boss fight. I somehow. I think I'm a little closer to Not Neptune that hard now. in the grand scheme of things. That means it's probably going to be a second boss fight. So much story. Well, we get oh yeah, monsters are on your side this time, or at least some of them are. It's a little weird, but there are some like neat things going on here. Wait, we lost a Zume? For God's sake! Well, I guess that's the end of that. I'm guessing that it's a, like just a conversation. Get it back. Yeah, figured. But yeah, that was a look at, like, one dungeon. Like, most of the dungeons I've played so far have been like that, in all honesty. It's literally just been walk up to enemies, beat the crap out of them. Once you've done enough of that, go and find the boss and do the same thing in a battle system that hasn't been particularly fleshed out, even after at least four hours of gameplay, but probably more like five or six for people who are actually going to stick around and watch the cutscenes. It's just... It's just not that interesting anymore. The writing isn't great. There's plenty of errors, which a couple of which I've already pointed out. Going? And as I said before, the, it's just it's just not that interesting anymore. I don't know why. There is one last thing to show off, though. Let's go back to the player room. Well, apparently my encoding's overloaded. That's a bad sign. Uh, well... We got a couple more things we can do around here. So if we go to your memories, this will actually let you see stuff from 
the uh, this will let you see stuff from the game, including obvious fan service stuff. You've got sound test events, of which there are a lot. I was not kidding. Those are only the events I've seen. It's bizarre. And you can also watch the different movies. You can also change your room objects. I think you can tell who's my favorite CPU. Here's the thing. So, this is the player's room, right? And the player room is where all the VR events take place in both the story and, like, see, look, my clock is reset back to zero. I didn't even notice that at first. Like, what the hell is going on there? I have no idea. This is where the VR events happen. So, the VR events are... Well, honestly, it's probably best just to play one and let you watch it. And in case you're wondering, you're stuck in place. You use the right stick to look around and the left stick... Oh. Steam VR mode just turned on. It should not have done that. That is bad. Oh, there we go, right. It's never done that for me before. But yeah, controls. Left stick lets you look around like this. Right stick lets you look around like this. You can't actually skip these until they're done, by the way. You know, some people would really like this room for how cozy it is, but my favorite thing about it is definitely all the games you have. Yep, yep. You have a ton of different types of games down here. FPSs and TPSs, some RPGs, and even driving simulators. Is this one a flight simulator? A sandbox game, too? Ooh, you've even got this one! Hey, hey, so I know you have a lot of games, but which types are your favorites? I like all types of games, really, but my favorite kinds are the super niche ones. They may not be very popular, but they're always very particular about a very specific thing, so I'm always impressed. You feel the same way, don't you, player? Right? I knew you, of all people, would understand. Oh, and I'll ask, since we're here... You might know this already, but we all used to compete with each other for shares. One day, an enemy appeared, and ever since we combined our powers, our ways of thinking have totally changed for the better. Now, we all work really hard together to save game industry from danger. I really like our relationships now. I want to be even closer to them, even if it makes me a failure as a CPU. What do you think, player? <laughs> really? Well, everyone does say each CPU has to protect her own nation, so it can be a bit complicated at times. Whoops! If I stay too long, Isti's gonna scold me. I better get going. Also, let's just keep all this between you and me. Thanks for listening to me today. I'll be back to see you again. Jump! So that was a VR event. They are not interesting in the slightest, unfortunately. They are surprisingly short, but also feel surprisingly long at the same time. Not very much interesting happens in them, and you don't have that much in the way of interaction. I mean, you can look around and... Uh, nod yet and shake your head if you agree or disagree, but outside of that, it just is, isn't that interesting. Like, that didn't even feel like NEP, if I'm being perfectly honest. There was there was a real noticeable lack of sarcasm from it there, which is a, a little bit disappointing, because I always like how NEP is being absolutely mad up, but there it felt like a really, really restrained NEP, and that just doesn't do anything for me. I like NEP for NEP. I like Noir for Noir, and... Well, to be fair, up to this point, I've barely seen any of the other CPUs. I mean, you get access to 
like VR events from all of them as you play through the game, but even like four or five hours in, I've only got two for every CPU, and they've all bored me to tears, like all the ones I've bothered to watch anyway. It just... I don't know what to tell you. I just... None of the... None of this is doing anything for me. It, um, even the fan service stuff, where it's pretty obvious that you can crawl down and see their panties or whatever. It just... It's bloody panties. It's, it's not even that good fan service. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, sure, you get some decent CGs in the gameplay, as always, but... I mean, in comparison to just, like, you know, sometimes getting a sneak peek, it just doesn't really work, and it just seems... It seems entirely tacked on. I suppose they're trying the VR stuff because they might want to make a more VR-centric game in the future at Compile Heart, but... Yeah, this, this, just, this whole thing hasn't been doing anything for me. I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm just... I, I haven't been enjoying Hyperdimension Neptunia V2R at all. The writing isn't great, the story is pretty boring, the gameplay is at the moment at least one note and hasn't been expanding fast enough in comparison to the other games. The VR visits feel tacked on, the, the VR in general stuff just feels tacked on, and it just, the right, and there has been, just been a few weird technical problems, I just, I can't recommend it, I don't see the point. That's pretty much all I got. Why is my encoding overloaded? I'm running on an i7-A700K, this should be fine. Oh, whatever, alright. Um, I'm hoping this video turns out okay, because I'm not doing this again. I don't want to play this game anymore, so... This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.